this slideshow is, des to de is designed to uh, talk about where um, in the brain specific functions are carried out and how male and female brains differ in both the structure and the ways in which they function. Certain parts of the brain carry out specific tasks. As you can see by the, the picture on the screen, um, there are definitely specific areas of the brain that are responsible for specific functions. Reading is probably one of the most difficult tasks for the brain to accomplish in that there are so many different areas of the brain involved in the task. The visual cortex takes in images and deciphers those. The auditory area focuses on sounds. Both Broca and Wernicke's area help to process language. Reading is a task that doesn't come naturally um, and because it involves so many different areas of the brain there's many different places that things can go wrong in learning to read. Skills involved in reading include phonology or phonemic awareness, the alphabetic principle, vocabulary, fluency, and text comprehension. In order to be a proficient reader, all of these skills need to fall into place. And again, this is why it makes it so complicated for an individual to learn to read. Not only does our brain specialize just in compartmentalized ways, but across hemispheres there's specialization as well. The left side of the brain is much more focused on words, letters, and numbers, as well as analysis kinds of processes. The right hemisphere is more focused on faces, objects, and places, so a more holistic perspective um, on what it's interpreting. While the two hemispheres of the brain um, definitely specialize in function, it does require that we use the whole brain in order to learn. So the idea that we are either right-brained or left-brained is not totally accurate. We use both hemispheres of the brain to learn, and it's the corpus callosum, which is between the two hemispheres, that allows for communication between um, one hemisphere and the other. While the whole brain is involved in learning, we tend to have preferences of one hemisphere over the other um, that supports our learning. Uh, you're taking a survey this week to determine your sensory preference, and it is hoped that by doing so, you'll have a better sense of your strength area as well as the area that you might need to um, hone in on for students who may not have the same strength area as you. A very exciting uh, piece of research or area of research right now uh, relates to gender differences in learning. And we're finding that not only is the brain structured differently, um, a male and female brain, but also the way the brain of a male or a female functions is also um, different. We know that there are developmental differences as well in the brain. And we know that psychological and environmental differences exist. Structural and functional brain difference occur even before birth. During the first trimester of pregnancy, a boy fetus begins producing male sex hormones that bathe the brain in testosterone. And this then wires the brain differently than girls. Another structural difference between boy and girl brains is the corpus callosum, which is between the two hemispheres. It is larger in girls than in boys, which allows for more crosstalk between the hemispheres and possibly um, gives girls an advantage in the ability to multitask. The hippocampus also differs between boys and girls. Um, in girls, the hippocampus tends to be larger and that allows for um, better memory storage and especially in the language arts this is beneficial to girls. The 
prefrontal cortex um, develops at a different pace in girls than in boys and this leads to some differences in functioning as well. Um, in girls, the prefrontal cortex reaches its maximum thickness by age 11, which is 18 months earlier than males. And this may be why we see boys making more impulsive decisions because their prefrontal cortex takes longer to mature. Girls also have um, differences in the way their cortical areas are used, meaning the um, cortex of their brain. For girls, they have more area devoted to verbal and emotive functioning, whereas boys have more areas devoted to spatial and mechanical functioning. This means that because of extra space devoted to certain concepts like language arts, reading, um, and writing, girls tend to outperform boys in reading and writing. The amygdala also differs between the genders. It grows faster in boys than in girls, which may lead to more, more overt aggressive behavior in boys. Certain chemicals in the brain also vary between the genders. Boys have less serotonin, which is a feel-good chemical in the brain, um, which may lead to boys being more um, impulsive and less calm than girls. Uh, boys have less oxytocin, which is a bonding chemical in the brain, which may make it more difficult for boys to um, form deep relationships. And the female brain also differs in the amount of blood flow. Um, girls tend to have 15% more blood flow to the centers of the brain at any given time than do boys, which means that we may need to um, get students, especially boys, up and moving more often to get the blood flowing to the brain since it's not naturally um, there in as much capacity as it is in females.